Section 13 of Christmas and Christmas Lore. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Christmas and Christmas Lore by Thomas G. Crippen. Old Christmas Hymns Within the century which saw the Christmas anniversary fully established, two great Christian poets vied with each other in producing hymns for its due celebration. First in order of time was Ambrose, the brave bishop of Milan, who so reluctantly accepted the office to which he was called by popular acclamation, but who, when once he was installed therein, showed that he feared not the face of man by repelling the great emperor Theodosius from the Lord's table until he showed penance for innocent blood, which in his anger he had caused to be shed. The Christmas hymn of St. Ambrose Veni Redemptor Genetum, Redeemer of the Nations Come, is to be found in a few recent hymn books of the high church type, but it is not suited to modern taste. Better known and far better adapted for social worship is the hymn of his great contemporary Prudentius, beginning Cord Natus Ex Parentius in English, of the Father's love begotten. This has found acceptance with its fine medieval tune among all schools of religious thought except Unitarians. These two, probably the first Christmas hymns ever written, were part of the ancient heritage of the English church, and with many other good things were discarded at the Reformation not because they were unworthy to be retained, but because King Henry's new bishops could not find anybody capable of translating them into decent, singable English. They are still used in the original Latin in the Church of Rome, as are two other fine Christmas hymns, a solus ortus cardine, from lands that see the sun arise, by Sadulius, said to have been an Irishman, and Jesu Redemptor Omnitum, Jesus Redeemer of all, of uncertain origin but probably of equal antiquity. But notwithstanding the habitual use of these hymns in the Roman Church for nearly 1,500 years, none of them except that of Prudentius can be said to have become popular. The reason is that they are too theological. They are orthodox divinity in meter, hymns for students or for the clergy rather than for the people. The same is true of all, or nearly all, the Christmas hymns of earlier date than the 12th or 13th century such as the fine hymn of Venetius Fortunus, Agnosat Omne Seculum, Let Every Age and Nation Own, which was regularly used at York before Reformation. It is true of a hymn of the great schoolman Abelard, and of another by his great antagonist Bernard, no one who sings Bernard's immortal, Jesus, the very thought of thee, can think that its author was lacking in devout emotion. But when he tried to write a Christmas hymn, he only produced a rhyming tract on the prophecies that were fulfilled in the Incarnation, ending with a rebuke of the Jews for not understanding them. It was just the same in the East. The first hymn that is sung at the Christmas morning service in the Greek church 
was written by Cosmas of Jerusalem, who died about A.D. 760. It is to my mind very beautiful, but it could never be popular except in the college or the cloister. Here it is, as translated by Dr. J. M. Neal. Christ is born, tell forth his fame. Christ from heaven, his love proclaim. Christ on earth, exalt his name. Sing to the Lord, O world, with exultation. Break forth in glad thanksgiving every nation, for he hath triumphed gloriously. Man in God's old image made, man by Satan's wiles betrayed, man on whom corruption preyed, shut out from hope of life and of salvation. Today Christ maketh him a new creation, for he hath triumphed gloriously for the maker when the foe wrought his creature death and woe bowed the heavens and came below and in the virgin's womb he dwelling making became true man our very nature taking for he hath triumphed gloriously he the wisdom word and might god and son and light of light, undiscovered by the sight of earthly monarch or infernal spirit. Incarnate was that we might heaven inherit, for he hath triumphed gloriously. All these hymns are theological. If they mention the incidents of the holy nativity, it is only to emphasize the wonder of the divine condescension. There is absolutely nothing of the holy sentiment of our modern Christmas verse. In a word, they are hymns of the cloister, not of the home. And this indeed is all of a piece with the Christology of the early and middle ages, alike in hymn and sermon and treatise. The thought of Christ as Savior was quite subordinated to that of Christ as King and Judge. Nor can we wonder at this. The sort of government with which men were familiar in those days was mere despotism, which might be wise and benevolent, but was more often selfish, capricious, and cruel. The purpose of redemption was therefore, so men thought, to substitute for this a kingdom of God, no less despotic, but perfectly wise, just and benevolent. And such was the wretched state of mankind during the breakup of the Roman Empire, that to bring home to the minds of men the thought that, in spite of appearances, the universe was subject to an omnipotent ruler, perfectly wise and just and good, was a real salvation. So long as the public services of the church were in an unknown tongue, there was no place for hymns in the vernacular. There was devotional poetry in plenty but always individual in sentiment and expression. Only after the Reformation did congregational singing form a part of the usual public worship, and even then in the Calvinistic division of the Reformed Church, the service of praise was long restricted to metrical palms. Hence we have few, if any, French hymns of the Huguenot period adapted to ecclesiastical seasons. It was otherwise where Lutheran influence prevailed, and the 16th and 17th centuries yielded many fine Christmas hymns in the German language. Probably the best known of these, at least to English readers, is that of Gerhardt, Frolich, Solmain, Hurt, Springen. In English, all my heart this night rejoices. 
the earliest english pieces to which the name of christian hymns as distinguished by carols can be properly applied are that of ben johnson i sing the birth was born tonight and that of george wither as on the night before the blessed morn with the latter development of christmas church song we are not here concerned end of section 13 recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver bc